Okay, we move on. If I mention song titles like uh, Catch a Falling Star, Hot Diggity, Delaware, well, some of my older viewers will know who the singer was. But if I mention songs like It's Impossible, For the Good Times, and I Love You So, well, virtually every viewer will know who I'm talking about because his career spans the generations. At more than 60 years in show business, one of the great entertainers of the 20th century. Will you welcome, please, Mr. Perry Como. <laughs> Over here, if you'd like to join me here, this, this one here. Just, uh, delighted to have you on the show. Please make yourself comfortable. <laughs> now, we uh, are, Perry, we are particularly... I apologize for this. You're a bit I cold. I have a little bit of a cold, and I'm, I'm freezing to death. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> well, you're entitled to be cold, and you're entitled to do what you like when you're over 80 years of age. Thank you. Right, you That's are a fantastic nice. man. I want, to, I want to explain to our audience in the studio and our audience at home that this is the very first time in a career of more than 60 years in show business that Perry Como has ever appeared on a talk show. And we are honored to have you with us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. I think the reason for that is uh, uh, they don't pay you. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. They're all friends of mine, and uh, actually, I have—I uh, don't have a, an awful lot to say any time. That's not so. No, really. You told me all about your trip around Dublin yesterday. Uh, what? You told me all about your trip around Dublin yesterday. Oh, well, that—I felt like I was home. Yeah. What happened to you? I feel like I'm—I'm I'm home when I come to uh, Dublin. I really do. I. I don't know the people, but uh, television, of course, is a, is a great media, you know. Yeah. Everybody on Grafton Street knew yeah. precisely who you were. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> and very nice. you got a fantastic welcome. But, but one of the things, I mean, everybody who knows your life story knows that you used to be a barber. Mm -hmm. You I still to, am. You still cut hair. You never know when this tough business gets tough. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> There's always that to fall back on, isn't there? That's but, right. But you made a pilgrimage yesterday to one particular barber's shop. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they don't know the... They probably don't know where it is. Did you ever hear of a, of a barber shop, uh, the Como barber shop? Yeah. Did you? Yeah, it's in Russell Street in, in Dublin. I went up and tried to pick up a few bucks, and I, I didn't do anything. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I was interested because I thought maybe... It may be a relative from way back, but uh, uh, it turned out not to be. It, it turned out to be the, uh, they had a haircut that they, they called the Como haircut. I never heard of that. Did you ever hear the Como haircut? See how excited they are? <laughs> no, that's true. That's how, how the barbershop was called Como's Barbershop. And I, that was, what, 30 years ago that this guy opened his barbershop? Since I opened it? Oh, oh he yeah. opened it, yeah. No, he, well, they were talking about a hundred years ago. <laughs> You're not that I old. I said, no, I wasn't around then. <laughs> but uh, he was cute. He was a nice man. Yeah. You took him by surprise. You didn't let him know you were coming, did you? No. So what happened when you walked in? <laughs> well, he started to sing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't mean to make fun of the man because he was a very nice man. But he starts to sing, and I love you so. Yeah, lovely song. And that was funny. He didn't have any. Uh, he didn't have any L's in his in his uh, in his vocabulary, and he, he couldn't. So I heard him sing, "And I love you so." <laughs> People ask me how how I've lived till now. <laughs> well, I fell over, but he was a he was a cute guy. He wanted to give me a haircut too. You know, I need one, but. Yeah. I yeah. saw the one he was just finished. He <laughs> took <laughs> <laughs> that. I, uh, <laughs> I, hope he, I hope he's not listening. I'm pretty sure he's watching. Uh, you actually did cut someone's hair. I mean, a, a young kid was in the chair. You, you gave him a haircut? 
No. You did. You got a tip. Someone gave you a tip yesterday. Oh, well, he was... <laughs> no, he handed me the, uh, the dryer. Yeah. And I scraped him around a little bit and dried him up. And he gave me two things. I don't know what they were. But 20p, actually. 20 Yeah, it's about 20 cents. I should have kept him. <laughs> <laughs> but I had a lot of fun. He was a, he was a cute man. Uh, yeah, you kept, you kept your hand in with the barbering, though, over the years. I mean, maybe for fun. But um, some of your people were telling me that you do still cut hair oh, live on television I for do. charity. Well, yeah, the, the most uh, that I got for, for one haircut was $7,500. Seven and a half thousand dollars. Yeah, I tried to keep it myself, but they wouldn't. Yeah, I, I was going to ask you for a haircut, but I've changed my mind. <laughs> 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 you, 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 um, you had a very successful career in, in your youth as a barber. Mm -hmm. And it was touch and go whether you'd give it up or not, wasn't it? Well, uh, the first band I was ever with, uh, I was paid $23 a week. And how much we earn? I don't know how much that is. In, uh, in, it's in about, your, what, 15 pounds a 15 week? 15 pounds? Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, I, enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed singing, and I, I went, of course, my... But how much were you earning as a barber at the time? Oh, $75, $80. And my father looked at me and said, you are joking, aren't you? And I said, no, I, I'd like to join the band. And that was, uh, God, I was 20, I was 21. That's 61 years ago. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the, the secret of your success, I mean, your trademark was your relaxation. I mean, you were so easygoing. Yeah. How do you achieve that? Get old. <laughs> Sell it. It happens, it happens naturally. Um, one of the great things about you, Perry, you were one of the, the, the first really big television stars. Because I remember, now I hope you'll forgive me mentioning this, but I used to see your show as a very young child in my granny's house on a black and white television on a Saturday night. That's a long time and ago. You were my idol. You were my That's idol. You were, they were terrific shows. They were How old were you then? In, uh, that's, that's a state secret. <laughs> Perry, you're, you're here to do your Christmas show, and you're going to be um, hopefully seeing a bit of Ireland in the preparation for the show. But um, I suppose you've been asked this before, but why do you shoot a Christmas show in January? Here, you mean? Yeah. Well, uh, this show won't be seen until uh, next Christmas. You know, I was wondering, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a long time ahead of time, you know. Mm, well, it takes time to process, you know, it's, it's, it's a big thing. They're going to put it in, on the cassettes, and uh, uh, you can, I guess, buy a cassette of it. Yeah? Please He's... do. <laughs> <laughs> Perry, you, you, you've mentioned money quite a few times, but I mean, you must be so comfortable that you never need to worry about your children, your grandchildren, and your great-grandchildren's future. I have to keep uh, working when I start to think about the members of my family. We have, uh, we have 13 children. I was pretty busy. <laughs> yeah. uh, we had 13 children. We have uh, one, two, three, eight grandchildren. Yeah. And a few coming up. Right. And great-grandchildren as well. It's, uh, it's pretty good going. And one of my, grand oh, God, I, one of my grandchildren are getting married, so I will have great-grandchildren. That's right. why I keep working. Right. And Perry, you're, you're a seventh son of a seventh son. Mm -hmm. now, does, the, does that mean anything to, to Italians? Because in Ireland, it's a very special kind of a person. It's supposed to have healing powers, magical powers. Well, it's no different. Do they say the same thing about a seventh son? I think so. Son? I think so. Yeah. I think so. In your case, the hands cut hair. <laughs> I don't think there's a, a barber in the group, really. Mm. I don't know of any of them. Of course, I don't see them too often. But, yeah. did, you, did you ever think about retiring? You've, you've retiring? Been... Uh, no. What, what do you think would happen to you if you decided to? I'd probably go out of my mind. I mean, singing to me, uh, I hope I'll be around a lot longer. Yeah, have they booked you into Las Vegas for your 100th birthday yet? 
No, that's George Burns. Yeah, I know. <laughs> George says, I'll... Somebody asked him how old he was. He says, well, I've got to live two more years because I've, I've got a date at the Palladium when I'm 100. <laughs> you believe that? But he's a delightful man. You know? yeah. Perry, you look fantastic. I mean, I feel good. For, for your years, you look very healthy and um, you, you're singing beautifully and so on. Well, is there any particular secret to it? I drink a lot. <laughs> Water. No, no, I have, I have a few drinks, certainly. Yeah. But you're a, a, a moderately living man. I mean, you don't go in for excess. Is that fair to say? No, I... Well, at my age, where am I going? <laughs> <laughs> now, tell the truth. Before the show, you asked me were there going to be ladies around. I see them now. Yeah. As a lot of your fans are in the, in the audience. Um, Perry, you know, all these people here are your fans. They they would love to hear you sing. Yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe I can send them a record. Yeah, you can send them a record, but you know, <laughs> you have to plug your record first, you know, by singing. Um, your, your musical director has wandered into the studio. Um, do you reckon you could? Well, you son of a gun, dude. <laughs> this is, by the way, uh, folks... I don't know what we can do, but... This is a genuine surprise. Uh, Perry, uh, I'm, just, uh, I'm just asking him, and his musical director is here, as a surprise. So, uh, shall we go over and see what we can work out? Okay. Okay, wonderful. I'll take that with, with me. And, uh... <laughs> now, we have you. I'll just slip over here. Now, there's a microphone. I'll slip quietly to one side. Is this on? Can you hear it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is a song. I don't know. If, will you help me with the lyric if I get screwed up here? Hmm? I'm sure it would mind if you just hum along. Okay. Maybe, maybe if you know it, you can just kind of sing with me. Wouldn't that be nice? How to handle a woman. Said a guy to a wise old man. Since the whole rigmarole began Do I flatter her? He begged no, no Do I threaten or cajole or please? Do I play the gay romancer? Said he smiling No
That was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. If you want to do another one, you can. It's up to you guys. Harry Como. Now. You're coming to the theater? Hey, pardon? You're coming to the theater? Yeah, I'll just, I'll, I'm going to mention that to them now. And... Little Pat gets a check for this. <laughs> I enjoy it. Thank you very much. You're very kind. I have, I have kind of a uh, semi-cold, for some reason. I sound like... B.S. Pulley. How do you? How would you know? Yeah. <laughs> Give me. Uh, am I taking up too much time? It's all yours. We're so delighted to have you. Well, how long do you go on here? <laughs> how long have you got? If you got to give us another bar or two. Three more hours. <laughs> Good night, all. <laughs> no, I don't mind singing. Oh yeah. Uh, is that a high? Is that a high thing? No. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Da 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 da. He got the Lord transposing. If he, if he makes a mistake, I'm gonna make you aware of that. This is a lovely song. I. Right? I think I recorded this in 1908. <laughs> Hide your heart from sight. Lock your dreams at night. It could happen to you. Before you go, um, just before we go, end of part one, I just want to tell you, uh, there are still one or two tickets available for Perry's concert in The Point. 
Uh, it's on next Friday and you get the tickets to the usual places. But the organisers have asked us to mention that the doors will be open at 6.45. The concert begins sharp at 8. And if you're late, you don't get in until 9.30 because it's being recorded for television. And once they start, that's it, locked doors. And Terry will be, uh, Perry will be doing his stuff inside in the point. Perry Como, thank you very much for joining us. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Perry Como, be after the break.